Ah, uh, I... Where am I? It's all right, son. Don't panic. It's over. Uh, I'm back? Where are the guests? I invited them to go up to their rooms. They're resting. Don't worry. Gregory? We won, Louis. It's over. He's dead? Definitively. Now the way is clear. At any rate, rejoice. Great things await us. What did you do to him? I devoured his soul. You... but... I didn't see you use the Holy Lance. Indeed not. I didn't need to. Can't you guess how I did it? The Lance of Longinus is just a vessel, Louis. It could have been any object that had the blood of Christ on it. The blood of an ancient, more precisely. But I didn't need the blood of an ancient. You see, I have been in dear Lord Mortimer's physical body for longer than my brother has been in Sir Gregory Holmes. Therefore, I am an ancient, Louis. He was your brother. Why did you kill him? He never meant you any harm. Oh, Louis, I, I am exhausted. Let's talk about this later. No, tell me why now. I want to understand. <sighs> Stubborn as a mule. After centuries of trying to convince him, I assure you I had no other option than to do away with him. He would never have allowed me to depose our father. In the past, he had already opposed me, and sometimes very violently. He seemed to you like a man of peace, because you did not represent any danger to him. But I can assure you, he was not. With anything to do with our father, he would be merciless. In any case, what's done is done. I'm going to rest in the dining room. Join me there when you're ready. The time has come to end this little antisocial gathering. No doubt about it. This family is rotten to the marrow. I did right not to trust them. Right. All I have to do now is confront Mortimer. Now's the time to join Mortimer. I won't be able to go back after... Here we go. Louis, at last. You wanted to see me? Let's get it over with, shall we? I've grown tired of all this. But before we begin, I would like you to give me back the Holy Lance, please. Now that Gregory is gone, he won't be needing it anymore, and I prefer to put it back in its place. I no longer have it. So, at the insistence of Monsieur Bonaparte, I put it back in its place. Come, Louis. You, you can't do that to me. Don't be childish, please. Come on. Of course. Here you are, Father. Thank you. Congratulations, by the way. You managed to find the right one among all the copies. I'm impressed. This conference will have been one of the most eventful I've ever known. I'll just have to take your word for it. Before I get to why we're here, you must know that I've been watching you very closely over these past few days. I was impressed by your intervention to prevent Peru from killing himself. You remind me of myself when I was starting out. As for the door of my crypt, no one had ever found out how to open it before you. You committed a serious mistake in proving unable to tell your sisters apart, causing the death of the most promising of the two. I remain proud of what you achieved for me by falsifying that letter to the Pope on behalf of Piaggi, because I know that was not an easy task. But the important thing is that you escaped the worst with Volner, because he could have killed you when you were in the guise of Piaget. Yes, it was a bit touch and go. Which leads me to a chat about what I envisage for you now. You are the chosen one, Louis. 
The one I've been waiting for all this time. Thank you, I... We are going to be able to become one. Hmm, I... I don't quite follow you. Be proud of yourself, son, for you are the one I have chosen to be my next mortal coil. I... I... but... what about me? Am I imagining things, or did he just tell me to my face that he's going to eat me? Unfortunately, no, you won't survive the transfer. But I want you to know that I only select my bodies from my own children, and that you are the one who has impressed me most. It's far from being my first time, as you can imagine. I didn't think it was possible to find a more promising son than dear Augustus. You can be very proud of yourself. W wait a second, hang on. Do you realize what you're saying? Are you insane? Oh, come, come, my son. Let's not end everything on a bad note, please. Son of a bitch. He's not going to get away with this so easily. I must make him get closer to me. Come now, don't complicate things. Wait, I have something else you want. Well, look at that. You found it. Hm. Decidedly, you are very resourceful, Louis. You impress me right up to the very last. For Alazif, I am willing to get closer. Wait, no. Uh... The blood of an ancient. <laughs> I was right, my son. You really are the very best. As Mortimer had planned, Napoleon Bonaparte sold Louisiana to the United States after purchasing it from Spain. Bonaparte continued his political and military ascension until he proclaimed himself emperor. He went on to invade a large part of Central Europe. The legend of Napoleon persisted after his death, conferring on the emperor the role of Messiah for France. Remaining very popular, George Washington put an end to the various internal rebellions without violence and re-established trade agreements with Great Britain. Upon his death, he became a national hero and left an entire nation in a state of mourning. On his return to Spain, Manuel Godoy proceeded to give Louisiana up to France. Later on, he became the target of the Crown Prince of Spain, Ferdinand VII. The latter gave no respite to his mother's lover, going as far as condemning him to exile. He confiscated all of Manuel's titles and possessions, as well as those of his mistress, Pepita. Pursued, they ended up living out their last years in France in poverty and anonymity. The influence von Volner had over King Frederick William ironically ended up working against him. The sovereign thrust him into increasing repression, until the end of his reign. Von Volner became the object of the people's hatred, was therefore stripped of his titles and land by the new king, and died in poverty to general indifference in the Prussian countryside. No more was ever heard of Lord William Mortimer. His sudden disappearance was the subject of conversations in the European courts, but only for a few months.